All right, Steve, thank you for many of these current red tide blooms are the worst we've seen here in recent years, leading to comparisons to the toxic blue-green algae in Lake Okeechobee and concern the two may be connected. ABC 7's Adam Cellini talked to a scientist today and explains why that's probably not the cause. Dr. Rick Bartelson has been startled by the number of red tide cells he's counting daily or dead marine life he's been asked to examine. It's more than we've seen in past red tide events when I've been here. Bartleson works for the Sanibel Captiva Conservation Foundation. The roads to his marine laboratory are lined with trash bags of dead fish and visible red tide algae. Not far is the mouth of the Caloosahatchee River, which carries discharged water and recently toxic blue-green algae from Lake Okeechobee. But he says one is not causing the other. The blue-green algae isn't causing the red tide bloom. We, we already had a red tide bloom that's been ongoing. We already have a lot of red tide cells out there. They already have a lot of nutrient sources. Red tide experts at Moat Marine Laboratory say red tide forms offshore and is a saltwater species unlike the algae in Lake O. Bartleson says it's unlikely Lake Okeechobee water is even coming as far north as Sarasota. We have some water that goes up to say Redfish Pass. It doesn't make it up to Boca Grande though. So it, you definitely don't get any up at Sarasota from, from okay. that. What can end up feeding red tide is something we can't see. The high levels of phosphorus and iron starting in Lake Okeechobee and traveling to the Gulf. And although it's almost impossible to prove in a water sample containing red tide, those are nutrients that can sustain a bloom like we've seen. If you take a glass of phytoplankton, you add nutrients, you get a bloom in that glass. ABC 7's Adam Cellini reporting there.